TV News. 11 o'clock report. Good evening. There's encouraging news from Iran tonight that the militants will turn over control of the 50 American hostages to the government. Tom Fenton has more. It was the imminent departure of the United Nations Commission that precipitated the militants' surprise decision. Commission members had packed their bags and were preparing to leave Iran after giving up hope of seeing the American hostages. The Iranian government had been promising for days that the commission could see all of the hostages. The militants had refused, insisting that a humanitarian visit to the hostages had nothing to do with the commission's mandate to hear Iranian grievances. In their statement, broadcast on Iranian radio, the militants spoke bitterly of their dispute with the government and declared, the Revolutionary Council should take the hostages, or the American spies, and do with them what they think best. A spokesman for the militants told CBS News in a telephone interview that they planned to remain in the embassy even after the hostages were removed. We would hand those hostages in to the Revolutionary Council, but we're not going to leave the embassy compound. we got a lot of things to do here. That put them into potential conflict again with the government. Foreign Minister Gapazadeh said he expected the hostages rather than the students to remain in the embassy. Most probably they will stay in the same place. The guards will be changed. That's to say the students will leave and they will be in the hands of uh, government. The Foreign Minister said Ayatollah Khomeini's recent decision to let the Iranian parliament decide the conditions for the hostages released will be carried out. Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. This is not the first time encouraging news about the hostages has come out of Iran, only to have hopes dashed by future announcements. Therefore, U.S. officials have reacted very cautiously to this latest word from the militants. At last night's White House dinner for West Germany's visiting Chancellor Helmut Schmidt, President Carter left early for a mysterious phone call. Secretary of State Vance left early, too. It turned out both had just got the depressing word that the U.N. Commission in Iran was getting ready to come home. Their mission, a seemingly humiliating failure. Hours later, towards dawn, came the apparent breakthrough, the militants saying they're going to hand the hostages over to the Revolutionary Council. Reaction here, hopeful, cautious, maybe the light at the end of the tunnel. We have taken note of the statements that have come out of Tehran today, and we will be watching to see what happens. Marvin Kalb, CBS News, the State Department. U.S. officials say more Soviet troops are pouring into Afghanistan as the Russians begin an offensive. The Soviets are trying to rid the eastern part of the country of guerrilla activity. U.S. analysts say Soviet troops such as these have just kicked off the long-awaited spring offensive in northeast Afghanistan and that some Soviet units today reached the town of Barakat, right opposite the border with Pakistan. In fact, according to one U.S. official, just a stone's throw away from Pakistan. But these analysts say the U.S. has not yet detected any Soviet hot pursuit of Afghan insurgents into Pakistan, although the risk of this happening has now been intensified. If anything, the Soviet military buildup is said to be increasing some 80,000 troops already in the country, and the analysts say this figure could go up to 150,000, with evidence that the Russians are preparing to build long-term and perhaps permanent military quarters. Today, Defense Secretary Brown was asked whether the Soviets had introduced nuclear weapons into Afghanistan. I don't want to comment on specific uh, weapons systems that the Soviets may have in Afghanistan, but. I will say this, I have no reason to believe that they have any nuclear weapons in Afghanistan. Bernard Kalb, CBS News, the State Department. President Carter's proposal to register women for the draft was soundly defeated today in the House Armed Services Subcommittee. The full committee could revive the proposal, but that is considered very unlikely. Here comes news so good, you'll have to taste it to believe it. Cheese? No, not real cheese. A delicious imitation of cheese. It has less than 20% of the milk fat of cheese. The rest has been replaced by gold and corn oil. Now smoother, creamier, richer tasting. It's golden image imitation Colby and cheddar and cheese food slices. Try the golden image line from Kraft. 
It's not new. It's better. If you have nationwide insurance, we have a number for you. A toll-free number you can call anytime to report a claim. It's called our Live Wire Claim Service, and it's free. Claims adjuster near you. Day and night, Nationwide is on your side. Hey, this number really works. Nationwide is on your side. The organization that claims control of the Virginia Seminary in Lynchburg says it will reopen with a new president and will sever all ties with Virginia College. Both schools have been closed indefinitely because of a federal investigation into misuse of student loan funds. Graham Wilson reports. At a meeting in Lynchburg, the executive board of the Virginia Baptist State Convention said it would reopen the school and Al Seminary President M.C. Sutherland and demand the chairman of the school's board of managers step down. We'll get somebody to come in, interim president to run the school. Now, here the thing about it is that we want a list. It shouldn't have to go to the government or nowhere. The government will turn loose a list of the students who were in attendance there, and we'll check those out, the students. The government will give you a list of the faculty. I don't have no problem with that. I can leave here and go up and get that if they have that. The federal government has seized both the seminary and college records for its investigation. But Lewis says the college is a separate corporation from the seminary and only leases land and buildings from the convention. He says the seminary has never received federal funds and should not be involved in the investigation. Lewis also accused Sutherland of, quote, finagling and maneuvering, but stopped short of accusing him of actually pocketing any federal money. Sutherland could not be reached for comment. Graham Wilson, Channel 7 News, Lynchburg. The Center for Disease Control in Atlanta has pinpointed the disease that killed a 17-year-old Bonnetide County girl last Christmas. Eugenia Halsey has more. Paula Cook was a senior at Lord Bonnetide High School. This photograph was taken for the 1980 school yearbook. She was also an honor student and a well-known athlete. Regional Health Director Dr. Nancy Welch says Ms. Cook died of meningococcemia, a bacteria-caused disease usually treated with high doses of penicillin. She says the disease is rare and is not usually associated with epidemics. How is it different from Rye's syndrome? It's different from Rye's in just that factor, that Rye's syndrome we very often find associated with epidemics of influenza because Rye's is very often, a, can be a follow-up to an influenza infection in a child. So Rye's syndrome is not unusually associated with epidemics. Cook was first treated for strep throat, then the more serious disease when doctors suspected it. Welch says normally it would be a matter of days before a hospital could pinpoint the cause of death, but in Paula Cook's case, the penicillin she was given initially destroyed any cultures, forcing doctors to get the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta to take more sophisticated tests. However, even with a confirmed diagnosis, Welch says it wouldn't have made any difference because the disease is so devastating. Eugenia Halsey, Channel 7 News. A budget committee of the Bedford County School Board has cut the administration's proposed $15.7 million budget for next fiscal year by nearly $1 million. The new proposal is about $14.8 million, representing a nearly 13% increase over this year's budget. Pat Wilson has details. In an all-day session, the committee trimmed such items as additional personnel and capital expenditures, which administrators say could wait until later. The committee accepted the administration's proposal for an 8.4% pay raise for teachers, although teachers had asked for a 14% hike, saying anything less would be woefully inadequate. The committee also accepted the administration's proposed 35% increases in transportation and operational costs. These represent the biggest increases of any items on the budget. Next year, we're projecting an average cost of gasoline for the entire year of $1.32 a gallon, which we think is a, a very reasonable figure based on some government projections. We have attempted to make some cutbacks in our transportation program to eliminate some non-essential uses, but still those cutbacks probably will not reduce overall gasoline consumption by more than uh, 3 to 4 percent. The proposed budget must now be approved by the full school board before going on to the County Board of Supervisors. Pat Wilson, Channel 7 News. George Washington, one of our first Americans, got the savings habit early. 
that's how he had the money to buy a fine hatchet. What he did with it is well-known history. If he hadn't saved to buy this fine hatchet, it would have been another story. Savings does make a difference, even though yours may not make a difference to American history. But then again, it might. Look at George Washington, and look at Jefferson, Jefferson Savings and Loan. Deposit at Jefferson today and select one of these prints. It's free while supplies last. We saved about $800 altogether. It saved us over $1,000. I saved over $1,600. Toyota's double value deal. Toyota's given over $500 in options at no cost to hundreds of customers who bought 1980 Toyota Celicas, Cressidas, Supras, Coronas, or Toyota trucks. It sure beats any rebate. You could save hundreds of dollars from your Toyota dealer, plus get over $500 in polyglycode options at no cost to you from Toyota. It's a double value deal. We wanted a feast, they gave us an hors d'oeuvre. That's how Roanoke Senator Ray Garland described the truck tax bill he got out of the Senate Finance Committee today. Paul Lancaster reports. Garland's theory is that trucks do more damage to the state's roads than cars do, so they should pay more. He wants to raise the licensing fees they pay the state by more than $5 million a year. But the Senate Finance Committee hearing Garland's bill cut his proposed increase by three-fourths. Garland was disappointed. What I have tried to do is to build uh, visibility for this issue, to build momentum, to demonstrate the injustice of the long-term subsidization of the heavy trucks, particularly the out-of-state trucks. And by this little minuscule, tiny, baby step, uh, they may have sort of undercut that momentum that I was trying to build. And so from that standpoint, I'm certainly disappointed. Garland says he may try to up the increase when it gets to the floor of the Senate. Paul Lancaster, Channel 7 News, the state capitol. The state's next two-year budget did not exactly breeze through the Senate today. The vote was 32 to 7. Opposition was raised on a number of changes proposed by the Senate's Finance Committee, like one proposal to increase the salaries and benefits of employees of the legislature. Not funded. The augmentation and further inflation of the legislative apparatus, sometimes called the legislative concubinage, is not really necessary. Uh, nor does it serve any useful purpose. The burden that causes people to need legislative aids are brought on by some of you guys who talk a lot. So uh, I would suggest that their expenses have been inflated too. Now, uh, it's just important that I think you take care of these other people like you've been taken care of. That amendment, as were all the Finance Committee amendments, was approved. A conference committee will now meet to work out differences between the House and Senate versions of the 11 and one half billion dollar budget. There are two Ed Finkelsteins in St. Louis, and because White House officials refused to admit they made a mistake, both were invited to Washington. Leslie Stahl has more. When Ed Finkelstein, the owner of a gas station in St. Louis, got an invitation to the White House for an energy and national security briefing for community leaders, he tried to tell the White House they'd made a mistake. He telephoned Washington to say there was another Ed Finkelstein in St. Louis, this man, who edits a union newspaper and was probably the person the invitation was intended for. But this Ed Finkelstein was assured that the White House just doesn't make mistakes like that. However, the other Ed Finkelstein, who did didn't get an invitation in the first place, suddenly got one too. I think the whole thing is uh, delightful, uh, even somewhat amusing. But this Ed Finkelstein couldn't make it, so only one Ed Finkelstein accepted the invitation. No, and I may be the littlest guy there as far as the political end of it is concerned, but I think I'm as good as the rest of them. By the time he arrived at the White House today, Ed Finkelstein was convinced that he was a community leader. Well, I own and operate a service station for 20 years on one location, and uh, I guess I would be part of the, part of the neighborhood and part of the, of the goodwill as far as cars are concerned. And so Ed Finkelstein, the gas station owner, got a national security briefing from the President of the United States. Leslie Stahl, CBS News, at the White House. You sure spring is coming back now? Oh, definitely. Tomorrow's going to be warmer than today. Saturday, you won't believe it. Okay? <laughs> I'm not saying what's going to happen Saturday. You won't believe it. We'll be back in a moment. Biscuit. Nobody can do it like McDonald's can. 
country ham and sausage biscuits with the taste that's grand. And now in participating McDonald's, you get a flare pen, free, with the purchase of a McDonald's big country ham or sausage biscuit. Enjoy biscuits with the flare, a free flare pen, while supplies last at participating McDonald's. We serve our biscuits with a flare. Nobody can do it like McDonald's can. Nobody. Come share. The Robinsons had built a wonderful life in the wilderness, but now they were losing it all. Looks like you've got a problem. I'm leaving this. You won't forget the suspense, the danger, the tenderness. Mountain Family Robinson, a beautiful film. Mountain Family Robinson, nature accepted them, but the government wouldn't. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Look for this ad, rated G from Pacific International. See the spectacular ice capades on March 19th with your Mickermack Half Price Coupon. And this week, get two half gallons of high top milk, just $1.79 at Mickermack. Ice Weather is brought to you by Vaughn Chevrolet and Cadillac, where you get fuel efficiency as standard equipment on every 1980 Chevy. It was relatively mild again here in our area today. We were expecting it to be a little bit cooler than it was. Actually, temperatures were a bit lower across the state generally than they were yesterday. Uh, they were saying 5 to 10 degrees lower, but we were only 3 degrees lower as we get up to 52 degrees today, whereas yesterday we had 55. Our morning low was rather mild, 36 degrees, a trace of precipitation in the 24-hour period ending at 6 o'clock tonight. At 11 tonight, we had plus 5 degrees Celsius, or 41 degrees Fahrenheit, with clear skies. The relative humidity was 62% at 11, with a light southwesterly wind of 4 miles an hour blowing, the barometer steady at 30 and 21 hundredths inches. At Danville at 10 o'clock, 38 degrees with clear skies, Charlottesville reported 45, Richmond 39, Washington 40. Bluefield 43, Bristol 40, all of them had clear skies. Uh, no station reported very cold weather this morning. The lowest temperature we noted was at Bluefield, 26. Bristol had 31, and it was 34 at Lynchburg. As far as highs go, Bristol had 57, 56 in Richmond and down in the neighboring state of North Carolina at Greensboro, 53 in Danville, 52 at several places, among them Roanoke, Lynchburg, and Charlottesville. Looking at our satellite pictures, it looks pretty clear in our area. There are some snow clouds up around the western Great Lakes area. And uh, out in the far west, which is uh, very difficult to see on this particular satellite picture, uh, heavy snow clouds. And the high pressure that you saw up here in the Ohio River Valley at about 11 o'clock when these pictures were taken this morning has now moved slightly off the Virginia coast. We're starting to get uh, sort of a southwest flow, although it's a rather light flow. It's four miles an hour at 11 o'clock. This will, of course, be our weather makers. It moves off the coast. We'll continue to get a warming trend here in our area. Uh, down here in southern Florida, got up to 87 degrees today for the high in the country. Uh, several places, among them uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, and the northern uh, station up here in Wisconsin, all, also Houghton Lake, Michigan, had an inch of snow in a period ending at 7 o'clock tonight, a six-hour period. Hibbing up here was one of two places that got down to 18 degrees below zero this morning. The other one was Haver in north-central uh, Montana. Now, out here in southern California, on up into southern Nevada and southern Utah, and in western uh, Arizona, they had heavy thunderstorms and rainfall today. Uh, they are expecting up to eight inches of snow in the northern and northeastern mountains of Arizona tonight. It's been snowing throughout the day in the Colorado Rockies, and they're expecting heavy snow in the northern mountains of New Mexico tonight. But our weather looks pretty nice, and we'll be checking forecasts in just a moment. If the name Cadillac isn't on your car, you aren't enjoying the ultimate in luxury driving. It's Cadillac for 1980. The DeVille in sedan or coupe, more elegant and fuel efficient than last year. The Eldorado, world class in engineering and a legend on the road. And the all new Seville, the most advanced and distinctive production car in the world today. Just as the name Cadillac has always stood for excellence, for the last 22 years, Central Virginia's Cadillac headquarters has been Vaughn Chevrolet and Cadillac in Lynchburg.
West Virginia is expecting fair and cool weather tonight with lows from the upper 20s to the middle 30s and the mid 20s in the northern mountains. Warmer with occasional rain tomorrow through Saturday with highs tomorrow from the upper 40s to the middle 50s. For North Carolina, clear and cool tonight with lows from the mid to upper 30s, low to mid 30s in the northwest mountains. Increasing cloudiness and mild tomorrow with a chance of rain in the afternoon becoming more likely by Friday night. Highs tomorrow in the low 60s. For tonight in our area, partly cloudy and cooler. Lows in the low 30s here in Roanoke. 20 to 25 degrees in the central mountains. Tomorrow and tomorrow night, increasing cloudiness and mild with rain likely by afternoon and continuing Friday night. Highs tomorrow in the low 60s in Roanoke. Uh, and the lows tomorrow night in the upper 40s. For Saturday, variable cloudiness and warm with scattered showers, but highs near 70 degrees. However, only in the upper 50s to the middle 60s in the central mountains of Virginia. Bill King's coming along in just a moment with news about Virginia basketball teams that are in postseason tourneys. Tonight's weather has been brought to you by Vaughn Chevrolet and Cadillac, where you get fuel efficiency as standard equipment on every 1980 Chevy. The 12-meter yacht Courageous, winner of sailing's most coveted award, the America's Cup. At First and Merchants, we know that winning the big ones in life takes pride, commitment, and years of good old-fashioned hard work. In sailing and in providing the bank services you need, being the best is a lifetime job. From Stevenson and Aldridge and Barca Lounger, this exciting new modular furniture, a stunning contemporary shape, and the surprise, in sections that open for luxurious, relaxing comfort. It's the Living End by Barca Lounger. Modulars that give you hidden ottomans at each end. The Living End. You can see the Living End and the complete line of Barca Loungers at Stevenson and Aldridge on Lee Highway between Roanoke and Salem. My! Wendy's puts a lot of meat in their hamburgers. Wendy's Hot and Juicy Single has a quarter pound of meat. Gee, Wendy's puts a lot of meat in their hamburgers. Wendy's Hot and Juicy Double has a half pound of meat. At Wendy's, we don't give you a lot of bread for your money. We give you a lot of meat for your money. That's a lot of meat. A lot of meat for your money. Come on in. The biggest field ever, 48 teams started playing tonight for an NCAA championship, but if it doesn't rally in a hurry, a big hurry, Virginia Commonwealth will be one of the 24 that end the season first round. The Rams down 11 at the half, the winner of this one to play NC State Saturday. Now tomorrow night, a couple of other state teams try it out. The Old Dominion playing UCLA at Tempe. Paul Webb, the ODU coach, just tickled with that. Uh, he says he thinks it's great. Great chance for some national exposure playing a team with UCLA's reputation. And Virginia Tech left Blacksburg today for a game with Western Kentucky. That'll be tomorrow night. It's being televised starting at 10.30. Charlie Moyer, optimistic the team will be out there at least till Sunday's second round. So we've worked hard this week. Uh, we didn't play well in our last outing against Cincinnati, but we have had some good practices, and we're really looking forward to playing in NCAA. We had some pretty good practices for the Metro tournament starting. I don't think it's really the practice. I think you have to be more mental, you know, and you know, have it deep down inside. You want to play and want to win. You got to have that killer instinct, which we had like the early part of the year when we had like a seven to eight game winning streak, and that's what it really takes. We've been working pretty hard in practice, and overall, you know, it just ain't practice. You know, you have to come out and perform the next day when it's game time. Uh, Don DeVoe, of course, the last man to take Tech to the NCAA. He's his last season at Blacksburg. DeVoe is back in the tournament tonight with Tennessee. Johnson's 28 points, a 47-35 advantage off the boards. Definitely the key factors, UT beating Furman. Moore had 22 for the Paladins. Just seven, though, the first half when uh, Furman fell behind. Saturday, UT plays Maryland. Clemson's into the second round against Brigham Young, 76-73. That one at Utah, a bit of an upset. Penn pulled the first uh, real upset, came from 10 down, 16 minutes to play to win that one. And K-State's defense allowed just, get this, 21 points the first half to uh, win that one. Now, Virginia finally knows who it'll be coming to Charlottesville Monday evening, second round of the NIT. It'll be Boston College. It beat BU tonight by 21, 95-74, the final first round game in the NIT. There were some thrillers, though, in that one tonight that went to Duquesne and Ole Miss. Southwest Louisiana beat 
Alabama Birmingham by a bucket. Michigan won by seven at home. Uh, Radford through with the tournament games for this season. The men lost the other night. Tonight, the women's team beaten by 20 by Charleston, 84-64. The women's Division II regional. In high school ball, it'll be Robinson against Bayside for the girls. Triple-A championship Saturday. The boys' Group A title will go to either Fort Defiance, big winner tonight, or Central of Woodstock. There's excitement everywhere you turn at New York Carpet World. From now till Wednesday night, everything's on sale at smashing special price cuts. Save 10 to 52% on each and every carpet, every style, every color, every brand. This elegant 1099 solid tone Saxony is reduced to just $639 a yard. This dramatic high-low style worth $1099 is just $577 for this event. This outstanding solid colored textured plush goes at only $488 and 750 foam-backed Antron nylon carpet is reduced to just $3.59 a yard till Wednesday night. There's extra savings on all our carpet remnants and every single bath carpet and no wax vinyl is especially sale priced. Even custom installations sharply reduced and all our paddings 20% off. This is the big one, the sale you'll remember for years till Wednesday night only at America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. You may think of Revco for low discount prices on thousands of items, but we've never forgotten what made us America's largest drug chain, our pharmacies. Since we first opened our doors, we filled over 300 million prescriptions. Our prices were low then, and still are today. Give us a call, and we'll even quote you our prices over the phone. We're America's largest drug chain, for the very best savings yet. We need all the Revco you can get. The men who work with United Press have figured Jeff Lamp is at least one of the 15 best in collegiate basketball. Lamp's, of course, led UVA in scoring for three years. But he's only a second team pick, remember, for all ACC this season. Tonight, however, he's the only guard from the conference to get any mention at all among UPI's All-Americans. Lamp, UVA on the third team. Ralph Sampson got honorable mention again, just as they both did when the Associated Press put out its All-America list the other night. Both lists look pretty much the same at four of the first five positions. The only difference is at the corner, the UPI gives to Michael Brooks. Albert King, AP's choice for that position, is a pick on the second team with a couple of others from the ACC, Jaminski and O'Corin. Gene Banks got honorable mention. I'll vote tonight in the NBA to add yet another team next season. We'll play at Dallas. We'll play in the Midwest Division. So now three divisions will have six teams. The Atlantic, the only one with just five. Two of those played tonight. The Nets blowing out to a big win with a rally the second half. Robinson had 23 of his 27 points the fourth quarter. That is the only final so far in the NBA. Three games to talk about in the NHL. The Islanders coming up with three goals third period to keep the Flyers still one point short of 100. The final that one, 5-2, to two, but the Flyers still lead the Patrick division by 28 points. Montreal leading the Norris, won by a goal. So did Buffalo, the Adams leader. Jack Nicholas uh, had the gallery pretty excited today at Lauder Hill. Tripped off five straight birds on the front nine. Then he took bogey on three holes in the backside. Needed an eagle on 18 to salvage a round of three under par. Three strokes off the lead. Danny Edwards a uh, stroke ahead of a group of eight that includes Sneed and Trevino. Larry Nelson two back. Then comes Nicholas. Nancy Lopez, like Nicholas, hoping to return to form this weekend. Just 19th in Money One this year in the women's tour. But uh, she, like all the other ladies, saw their first round at L.A. rained out tonight, and it uh, could be a short trip to the Nationals for VCU. And that's it for the 11 o'clock report. Dexter Mills has more at 6.50 tomorrow morning, followed by the CBS Morning News. For Hal Grant and Bill King, this is Dave Winters. Have a good night.